Hello, welcome to this uh, substance powder tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, um, it's not so much a tutorial, it's more of a fundamentals of substance painter and how it works and how to then build your textures. So, uh, the absolute base of your uh, your texturing here is going to be your model. Um, not necessarily the shape, you know, the shape is obviously as you want it. Um, it's more the UV map. So, uh, I've just imported a, uh, a model here, of which I have two versions, and this one's been atlas mapped, uh, sometimes called like a smart unwrap or a projection, uh, smart projection, something along those lines, uh, which basically just takes views from each side and splits everything up. Um, so, the reason you need to be careful is uh, because, as you'll see later, Substance uses the maps to generate effects. And if I drag this steel paint smart material onto my layers, you'll see it looks awful. And that's because the UV islands are all uh, a bit weird. They're a bit close together. They're um, small. You know, big areas have been split up into other areas. And, you know, this here uh, is just a reflection that the effects is, are just not working. So, you know, you can find, and I've found it many times in my early days, that, you know, if your UV map isn't right, you tend to get bad effects. And that can really, you know, affect the way you think about substance uh, or painting in, in general. So I've uh, just done a UV on a, another one. If I go to uh, a new file, let's make it 2048, and I'll slip my radio uh, UV and then click OK and discard that. Uh, I need to quickly rebate my maps. So I bake my maps, I take the ID off, I don't use it. Uh, you can use it. Set my ambient occlusion base values. Somewhere around there, set my curvature base values. Oops, and set that bake off. We'll go through those much more a bit later. Uh, so let's bake those. There we go. I click OK. I can go to layers now and drag that over, and it should be much nicer. There you go. Uh, so this is much nicer. I hope you can see. Uh, we don't have any weird kind of blocky uh, distortions and you know rapid transforms or translates. We've got a bit of summer down there, but I think we can deal with that. Uh, but that's just you know with a slightly nicer run wrap. If I can remember how to pan, apparently I can't. Let's press F to focus. So rather than having lots and lots and lots of islands, you know I've taken some care to unwrap it in a way that it's going to. You know, behave itself much better. Um, so yes, first sort of pillar of your uh, substance painting experience: do a nice UV map. Um, if it doesn't bother you, if it's a small piece, you know nobody's going to see it. It's off in the distance. Then by all means. Uh, but if you're doing anything that's going to be seen, uh, going to be seen quite prominently, you want a good UV map. Okay, so uh, that's the first kind of pillar, if you like. Uh, next we'll go on to uh, the maps and, you know, breaking them out on what they're used for. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so the next um, sort of layer is your mesh maps. Your mesh maps, uh, which you need to bake, you know, when you start, uh, will determine um, or provide the basics for all of the the effects that Substance Painter can can do for you. Uh, all the generators and uh, most of the filters will get to those. Um, they will use the bait with the mesh maps to help you. So I've uh, I'm just going to slip my radio again, and we'll create a, a 2048. Click OK. Discard that one and uh, we'll start to bake the maps we'll have a look at baking the maps so it's over here on your texture set settings and if you click on this little box uh, with a slash through it 
and then click base mesh maps uh, you get the options up so the first thing is your resolution uh, I'm going for 2048 you can lower that or even increase it depending upon how powerful your machine is and I'm going to set my uh, ID off uh, I personally don't use them um, and then ambient occlusion so I'm going to leave all of these at default to start with and then we'll have a look at them and then we'll adjust so um, we've got ambient occlusion, curvature, position and thickness so I'll bake those textures and this is going to bake at default values see it chugging through them there so up here we have this little material drop down let me split this to 3D only and uh, have a rotate around there we go so if I go and have a look down here we'll see mesh maps and now I can see all the mesh maps that I've generated I haven't generated a normal so it's blank uh, the world space normal will be there that uh, kind of uh, tells you know the program where each bit of the model is in 3D space uh, we have ID which I didn't bake and we have ambient occlusion so ambient occlusion is going to uh, shade areas uh, that are occluded from light so where two uh, polygons are close to each other and facing each other you know they have a tendency to block light so you get darker areas and we also have curvature so the curvature map uh, I mean I was a bit confused by it when I started uh, the mid grey is no curvature no change in angle um, and you'll find on very curved pieces like this uh, little antenna up here it's kind of a mid grey uh, perhaps a bit lighter because there isn't actually much change in angle between polygons it's dictating you know how different the angle of polygons are so if they're straight there's no difference if they're in 90 degrees there's a lot of difference so you'll see there's some white areas and that they are like a positive uh, change in terms of the direction and then you'll see some little black pieces uh, black areas which are negative so they're the other way around okay so sometimes depending upon the model you have depending upon you know distances and such like um, you may find that your maps aren't baking nicely um, you know they're not showing up enough so what we can do then is just rebake them so if I go to the bake maps here uh, I'm going to turn everything off and then just turn the ambient and the curvature on now I'm going to increase the amount of rays that are being used on both and then I'm going to increase my occlusion distance to somewhere around half and my curvature distance to somewhere around half as well that's my kind of starting point and then I adjust up or down depending upon you know uh, the result so we can rebake those we should take a, just a moment it's only a couple of maps there we go and now we have a stronger map uh, I hope you can see it I've got much more in the way of uh, occluded black areas uh, in this one what map are we on we're on curvature yes so it's extending the the distance it's checking for the angle on so I'm getting much blacker areas there especially up on this uh, antenna piece up here and if I could stop pressing the wrong button that would be awesome there we go there's <laughs> somewhere in there see it's, it's coming much further away from the uh, from the edge and that you know for me it gives you more kind of scope and more uh, you know options for adjusting your textures if you have a really strong map similarly if we go and have a look at the AO that should be a much stronger AO map as well there we go okay so that's the maps and you know we'll see in the next uh, few er um, you know sections you know why they're mo why they're really important and why um, why we need to generate them 
Okay, so uh, next step, uh, we'll get to the next part, which is uh, layers. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so let's switch this back to the material view and I'm going to go to the layers tab. So this is generally where all the texturing happens. You know, we create a layer and we create layers above, above, uh, you know, or below, move them around and we get a texture. So there are different kinds of layers. Uh, we have paint layers here and we have fill layers and then we have uh, presets. Uh, we have our effects and we have our masks. So all of those come together to enable you to build up a convincing texture and all with uh, PBR. So in general, uh, I will always start with a fill layer. So I'll just add a new fill layer to that. And then down here in the properties, we have forgive me the properties for this fill layer so we have our projection type uh, our filtering and our UV warp uh, wrap rather um, our UV transformations where we can scale up and scale down and rotate um, and down here we have our types so each layer is made up of channels so we have the color channel the height channel a roughness metal a normal and in this case, I've got an opacity and an emission, which I am going to turn off because, you know, for this, I'm not going to use them at all. So underneath that, then we have our base color and our height and all of our controls for this. There's nothing I can really do on the normal here, uh, but I want it to be here because we're going to use it. So we can change the base color. I'll just click in there and make it a darker uh, gray I can change the height which I wouldn't do here because um, it's just going to change the height across everything which we don't want uh, we have the roughness so I can make it super shiny by turning the roughness down and if I shift and right mouse you can see as I'm rotating the uh, environment dome the clouds sort of reflecting in that uh, or we can shift it right up to make it extremely rough indeed. Uh, or we go somewhere in the middle, you know, somewhere you know around there, a kind of a matty plastic. So we have metallic. Is this going to be metal or is it not? Probably not in this case. And we have our normal. Uh, generally for me, if I'm not going to use a channel, I turn it off. Um, you know. If you've got all the channels in there and all of them are working, you're kind of multiplying out the amount of layers you've got. Each layer will essentially have, you know, as many layers within it as your uh, channels. Uh, so, you know, for memory sake, I try and turn the ones off that I'm not going to use. Uh, so actually, in this case, I'm not going to use normal at this level anyway, uh, or height <laughs> for that matter. <laughs> okay, so that's my kind of initial plasticky kind of texture and what you do is then build upon that um, so you create layers above it to add detail add interest so if I create a, another new layer this time I'm going to use an actual preset material so I'm going to turn my filter off up there so we have materials that we can use so down here we have all sorts of uh, materials that are set up and come with uh, substance and we can drag and drop one of these over to enhance our material so if I drag this plastic glossy over here and just drag it onto that layer whoops <laughs> don't need to do it like that sorry uh, with the fill layer selected, you just click on it and it will apply. Oh, sorry, that's my stupid fault. Uh, and now I get a completely, you know, it completely masks my underlying uh, layer. So what I'm going to do is just change this uh, down to a, a darker uh, grey. Now I have a completely shiny layer over my uh, matte layer. So how do we mix between them? 
Well, that's where masks come in. So for layers, we can right click on it, we can add a black mask, and now you'll see, all I can see is the matte layer. So underneath this mask, we're gonna add some generators and filters and so on and so forth to build an effect. And that's the next level. So we'll talk about that in the next, uh, in the next section. Okay, so um, masks uh, and generators. At this stage in the process, I, I don't want to be painting anything. I want it all to be general and generated. So my first thing is to add a generator to my mask. So if I click on the mask and then right click and add a generator, it will add a blank generator to my scene. And then if I click on that generator, we get a number of presets and uh, we have a mask builder and a mask editor. Uh, I'm not going to go into those just yet. We're going to go for uh, something along the lines of metal edgeware. So if I click that metal edgeware, it is essentially going to run it through a, st a step uh, which calculates where the edges are and you know how to apply the mask. So if I go down the bottom, you'll see we've got some image inputs and these are our baked inputs. So we've got our curvature down here and our AO, our position and our world space normal. And it's using all of those together to create this effect. If you didn't have them, nothing would happen at all. Uh, so if I go up, each generator generally has uh, some parameters you can uh, mess with. So I can take my wear level down. Uh, I can take my wear contrast up and that will sharpen it, or I can take it down and it will soften it. We can turn a uh, triplanar projection on, um, which will take uh, work with our custom grunge, which is down here. Um, we have a grunge amount, so I can spread the grunge around a little bit more and I can increase the scale and decrease the scale according to my needs. Uh, so I'm not going to go into just every single one. This is just the, the basic anatomy of a generator. <coughs> you have lots of slides which you can slide around to you know, get effects out. Um, and, but as it stands, this is the wrong way around for me. I want the shiny plastic unworn and the edges and corners and where it's been touched to be worn. So a lot of generators, uh, I'll say most, with the caveat of I'm not quite sure, uh, have an invert function. So if I invert this, you'll see I now get a quite shiny walkie-talkie with some worn edges, where people have you know rubbed against it and you know picked it up and used it over the years, and you know it's gradually become worn down. So one last thing in this one then. So now I can see the difference between the two. I can see my Shiny plastic is way too shiny, so I'm going to increase the roughness to dull it down a bit. Okay, so that is a an essentially a very basic texture. You know, it doesn't look too bad, looks all right. Uh, but you know, we've got it to a point. We could add more and more and more um, details to it with uh, generators. Um, but essentially the last stage when you've got this to the point where you're happy with it is to add the painted details. So we'll go on to that in the next one. Okay, so the last steps in uh, you know, texturing uh, in substance is to actually paint your details. Uh, you may get to the point where you don't need to paint details. You know, for small props, some that's over, you know, not going to be seen very well. Uh, but your hero props, you almost certainly are going to. So we're going to add a paint layer. So that's this little paintbrush. And then that's going to give us our paintbrush properties. And we have all sorts of things. We can decide what channels we're going to go on and the colours. But we can also select 
a material. Um, in this case, I'm actually going to uh, turn perhaps color off. I'm going to turn height on and metal and normal off. So my height, I'm going to go in a little bit. So I'm just going to make a very small change there. And roughness, I'm going to turn up. Other than that, not an awful lot else. I'm just going to affect the, essentially, the roughness and the height where I paint. So we can also change our brush. So if I go to the brushes palette here, we've got all sorts of brushes we can uh, pick. So I'm going to find a dirt brush and let's try dirt one. And as I paint with that, you should see that it jitters around a little bit. So it has some, you know, uh, yeah, dynamic property to it. Uh, I'm also going to just put a little bit up here just to give it a little bit of interest. Yeah, so we don't have any right, fully smooth areas, but some areas are smooth. Uh, I imagine these buttons would have some pressing on them. So I can change my brush size by pressing control and right mouse uh, click and then move left and right. I'm just going to draw in there. There we go something like that. These buttons have been pressed a lot and yeah so I don't have to paint colour at this point in time that's what I'm trying to say but I can affect the surface in various ways. Let me make that a little bit bigger again with a uh, shift and right click just try and you know trying to have you know, get the idea that somebody's hand's been wrapped around this and of course I need to do that on the back as well. Um, I can change the properties of the brush so we've got a size, a flow, a spacing and a jitter so if I increase the position jitter I'm going to get much more kind of movement with it as I stroke across the surface. There we go. So that's pretty much that, um, except to say we could also paint with an actual material, you know, with colour, with, you know, uh, effects. So if I had a new paint layer, uh, we can change the material out and uh, let me turn that off and then I can pick a material. Uh, so what sort of material could I have? Well, let's go for this plastic uh, material here. And what I'm going to do is put a serial or a, a number or something down this side. So for that I need a, a different alpha. So if I click in my alphas and then in the search type font, we'll get lots of kind of words and things. All of these ones at the top that say substance, you can change the text on. So what I'm going to do is uh, pick one of these that might be okay let's try this one and then down the bottom here where it says alpha I can change this text in the parameters to say I don't know WT42 uh, whatever and now I can paint that onto my walkie talkie my layers are right yeah they're okay I think <laughs> I think this is my fault. I've uh, I've got a brush which is so jittery that it's you know painting miles away. So let me undo that a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go back to my brush and just pick the uh, standard hard brush. Uh, hard. There we go. Basic hard brush first. Then I can change my alpha. And oops. Sorry about getting mixed up here. There we go. Now I can. Go and find my text uh, and call it a WT-42. Now it's important here that if I don't want it to be blue, that I change it now because this isn't a layer that is dynamic. I cannot change it once I've uh, put it down. And that's what you do at the end, essentially. Uh, so I'm going to turn that into a kind of uh, black there. 
and I'm going to change the roughness so it's much much no let's make it shiny instead I've got an idea of how we can uh, make that look good let me click off that and then right click to make it bigger and I can paste it down and that then starts to combine with our texture but you'll notice that it's shiny while the wear and the dirt is um, is not and it's sitting on top and that doesn't seem right but all you need to do is drag it below your dirt layer and now it will combine in and be consistent there we go okay so I've got one last little thing to look at um, in terms of painting uh, which we'll do in the next one which is adding some holes to the front of this so it looks like a, a grill if you like so I will talk to you So in the previous video, I mentioned that once you'd, um, you know, painted in a paint layer, uh, you can't change anything. But there is a way of doing it, and that's to paint a mask instead of an effect. So what we'll do is we'll add one last fill layer, which is going to fill over everything, and I'm going to change, uh, turn off the color, uh, the op the opacity and emission and the metal and I'm going to leave rough and high on and then we'll add a black mask to it now this black mask is already a paint layer so you don't have to add a new thing underneath it for a paint layer you can but you don't have to okay so what I want to do is sort of put some holes in the top of this to give it a kind of you know um, the look as if it's got a <laughs> yeah something to speak into is what I'm trying to say uh, so let me clear my filter and for my brush oops we're going to use the hard brush so we use a hard basic and then we're going to go and have a look at our alphas and find something suitable so in our alphas we've got all sorts of uh, options we can use uh, I'm going to perhaps use these circle dots. Let's click on those. Uh, once I've clicked on those, they're already instantly added to my alpha on the brush. And I think I seem to remember I made <laughs> I made some uh, which were better arranged than this, but it's distinctly possible that they're not here. Uh, I've reset substance many times over the uh, years so anyway right okay so let's stop waffling so if I scale up my brush here and click to lay down a uh, a mask and we can see our mask being painted if we change our view to mask I can simply keep adding those down to somewhere around about there and if I turn the material back on, you'll see that not an awful lot's happened. We can see that there's a difference. They're shiny and uh, round, and that's great. But that's not the effect we want. Uh, what we want is some height. So if I change it positively, you'll see it comes out. If I change it negatively, you'll see it goes in. And my roughness is uh, too low. I want it to be really rough in there so I'm going to raise that up until I'm happy so now you know I, I've painted where I want the effects to be but I can still control the effects and you know show you know have some control is what I'm trying to say <laughs> okay so uh, I mean that's it essentially those are the basics um, you know, you start with a good uh, UV unwrap. Uh, we had some layers. Uh, we had uh, masks and generators, um, and then we sort of paint in the last bit of detail. This has been, you know, a quite a simple setup. Uh, some are, you know, much more complicated than this. Um, but these are the basics, and once you get used to the basics, you know, the joy of substance is the amount of scope you've got, the amount of generators you have to use. Um, you know the amount of uh, 
you know, just the sheer combination of the way you can put layers together and textures and, you know, bring it all in and, you know, get it going. You know, it's very creative. It's creative to, you know, figure out, well, if I take this texture and I take this generator and I combine them in this way, I can perhaps get this effect. And, you know, when it works, it's really terrific. <laughs> Uh, so let me just go to the uh, render uh, area because this is where you'd want to see it in the last place and without all that horrible grey uh, that's what it looks like in IRA um, and you know it could be better could be worse <laughs> uh, but it's you know it's pretty good and not many actual steps to get there so that's my basics that's my fundamentals of uh, Substance Painter and uh, if you have any questions put them in the uh, in the comments and i hope to talk to you in another set another time take care